Whoa now, what do we have here, guys? Look at that. <laughs> nice little random spot. So that's a pretty good start. There we go. I had to pull over and get that one. <laughs> another, another interesting climb straight off the delivery truck. We just caught the Enzo randomly driving down uh, the road here in Toronto, and now we got a freshly delivered full carbon fibered 296 GT3. Um, this is probably the best looking GT3 car there is right now in the whole field. I've seen all the Huracans, uh, the GT3Rs, all that stuff. This definitely takes the cake for me. Look at that thing, it's so cool. Um, it, very reminiscent of the old 250LM, I would say. Just how the uh, window like cuts in at the back. It's just so good looking, the swan neck wing, obviously. Um, and yeah, full carbon fiber, it's just so sinister. That is a <laughs> couple of really nice surprises here. Ferrari themed surprises. And yeah, just again, um, obviously so much more extreme than a standard road going 296, all the different aero bits on it, canards. These raised louvers are really nice, and I do like on this particular 296 GT3, it sort of looks like they're going back to like silhouette style cars from like late 70s, early 80s, so uh, Ferrari's car in that era would have been the 512 BBLM, just these crazy, crazy wide body looks to them. So yeah, there's just so many cool little things to look at on the 296 GT3. Here we go, and just a back angle there, 296. See a lot more of the race car bits there, the huge cut diffuser, then again with the swan neck wing, and I can kind of see what I meant by the cut wind with the back there. It also has the 296 indentation carved into the plexiglass window, which is pretty cool. But yeah, that is definitely what I would say the best looking GT3 car in the current GT3 field, the 296. So yeah, really random and special treat. We get to see a brand new one delivered here in Toronto. And there it goes to join its road going counterpart. And I guess we'll head off to our next uh, adventure here and see where the day takes us. Yeah, so we're being a little cone block here, but I wanted to show you guys couple of Pinin Farinas today. So we all remember the Batista, the 1900 horsepower electric hypercar based on the, the Remac chassis. So essentially just reworked body style, but yeah, it does share a lot of components with the Remac Nevera, but um, the Batista is a totally different design. It does have this active rear wing that sort of reminds me of the original Zonda C12 because it is split down in the middle. It's really, really cool looking. Uh, the design is absolutely fantastic. I quite like this. We did see it driving around a little bit, as I mentioned, at Monterey Car Week. And I think, yeah, we saw it at Dream right after that in Connecticut. But another car, another Pininfarina, to be exact, that we did see back at the Quail, but haven't seen since, is this one right over here, the B95. So there it is, reunited with the B95 from Pininfarina. Basically, an electric Ferrari Monza, that's the best way I can put it. Track only hypercar, but it does have the classic speeds to look, as I mentioned, with the Monza, the Sterling Moss, the Elva, things like that. So we've got the humps over the back here. This section is super cool, actually, because it is a, a little, little luggage compartment underneath, so it is slightly practical, which is pretty damn cool. Inside is absolutely beautiful, all the carbon fiber, but then you have these hound's tooth headrests on the back of these leather seats. It's absolutely fantastic looking. We have the racing harness on there. This looks like a car that could be street legal <laughs> and could be seen driving around maybe the likes of Monaco, but it is mainly a track focused hypercar. Here we go, we've got the door open. We've got the Monterey Car Week plaque. We all remember that where the Burketta 95 debuted. But um, yeah, again, just another look at the interior here. These little tiny windscreens, of course, these open top Track only hypercars don't come with roofs, so that's pretty much all you're protecting you. You need to be wearing a helmet at all times. But yeah, you get a look at these massive, massive brakes. It's electric only, obviously. So as we shift around to the back, this section right here is where you're charging the car. And then I'll have another look at the back angle here. It's a really, really clean design. I do like the tail lights, how they just stretch across there. There's definitely a bit of Batista in the mix there as you can see, but there's so much to look at on the B95. It is a fantastic looking car. So yeah, it's absolutely fantastic that we get a chance to have a look at the B95, the Pininfarina Burketta as it's getting loaded up with all of its gear again. Yeah, so it comes with a ton of luggage, 
helmets, all of the essentials that you would need for a nice road trip to a track for the Pininfarina B95. And a fun fact about Pininfarina, if you didn't know, its founder, Batista Pininfarina, is actually the uncle of the first ever Formula One world champion, Nino Farina. So it's a fun little fact for you, and that is why there's also now a Nino Farina edition Batista that we also saw unveiled back at Monterey Carway. But this, in particular, only 10 units being built of this car so it is incredibly rare don't know when you guys will get a chance to see one if ever so it's pretty cool that we get to have, have an up close look here and shouts out to grand touring here in toronto for giving us the access to this if you guys want to purchase a pin farina and you're in toronto or anywhere in canada for that matter this is the place to do it and there we go the briquetta 95 Alright, we're at uh, VPX performance now, so a little change of gears. I got a few cool race cars I wanted to show you. Again, it's uh, getting close to winter here in Toronto, so uh, events are dwindling down, but it's cool. We get to check out uh, a new shop, see some race cars. AMG GT4, you got a GT4 Cup Sport over there. This is the really cool one, though. Obviously, 720S is always nice, but this 996 sort of like, uh, almost like an RSR style build that you used to see in like American Le Mans series. These super, super wide fenders, really sick. Obviously, fully gutted out. We've got these nice GT style carbon fiber mirrors. Check it out, the short shifter in there, the OMP bucket seats, roll cage, all of the goodies. It's really, really nice. I'd love to know what kind of power it's putting out. <laughs> because it definitely is not stock under the hood. If it's that wild cosmetically, definitely has some crazy performance upgrades, but just looking at it, it looks pretty damn nice. And the 720S is open, so might as well head over there, have a look at it. Always nice to check these out. It does have the carbon fiber bucket seats in it from Recaro. Uh, harnesses as well, the orange seat belts. Pretty cool, match the exterior. It's always nice to see a 720S, why not? And a couple of really interesting and very tiny little open wheel racers. It does have the Brabham sticker on the front. I'm not sure if it's a legit classic Brabham car or if it's just like a recreation meant to look like it. Either way, it's really cool. These old wedge shape style open wheel racers are always really nice. Sort of check out how things have evolved over the years. Oh my goodness, like inside things. I'm a pretty small person. I could fit in there, but pretty tough for a lot of people. You don't really have a lot of room to work with. Steering wheel and some gauges, that's about it. Uh, looks like they are both inline fours too. And I just love the transmission hanging out of the back, sort of like Sesto Elemento style. Big old exhaust pipes. Yeah, have a look at that one. How much further it sticks out from behind the rear tires. That is pretty insane. Can't really do much bump drafting in that series. And have a look at this cockpit too. This one looks a little newer. So definitely, I would say maybe like a recreation, but um, really, really cool nonetheless. Exos suspension, damn. Always good to check out something a little different. Don't really get to see things like this up close all the time. Oh, pop up for days. Lord almighty, we made it. The Diablo SE3, we got the XJ220 back there. We got freaking pandemonium. Welcome back to Toronto. It was a nice, clean NSX. Of course, left-hand drive, Acura branded, parking ticket and all, as we are back in North America. It's an Acura NSX now, not a Honda NSX, but it's just in time. It's like the SE30 Diablo, the XJ220, 